Welcome boxing fans, it's EBA Boxing and we're going to talk about some real quick recaps. Uh, Ryan Garcia came uh, to his second fight with uh, John, uh, Joe Guzman um, to beat Javier Fortuna in July, two weeks ago I believe. Uh, he looked a lot better in this second fight with the new trainer. Uh, Danny Garcia fought at 154 versus Jose Benavides. Um, and he looked uh, okay. He dominated, but um, Benavides hasn't really been the same since he got shot at the in the leg. So um, he did call out Lara and Keith Thurman. Uh, I think right now at this point he is trying to just get as big name as possible uh, to, you know, I, I think generally he knows that he might not be competitive at 154. That is not his weight class. Uh, but if he is able to get some couple last fights before pretty pretty much hanging up the gloves, th those are some of the fights that he is interested in. Now, Virgil Ortiz is coming back. Finally, he had some health issues that prevented him from fighting. And uh, this fight is going to be versus Michael McKenson uh, this, this weekend. So it's been a while, I believe, the last time that uh, Virgil Ortiz fought was in 2021 of last August so it's almost going to be a year I think a little uh, a week le uh, less than a year um, uh, 814 was the last time he fought um, so uh, it's it's going to be good for him to get in the ring he is fighting a softball this individual has 22 wins only two knockouts but surprisingly he has a lot more uh, knockdowns than what you would think of a person with two knock out uh, and this is given maybe the southpaw style and some of the highlights that I was watching um, he has some orthodox uh, and combination uh, punches that really catches some people off balance and really which really helps the case uh, of his power shots <clears throat> he also has um, like that combination punch punching with sometimes even the same hand allowing to uh, him to have a little bit more tools than the average boxer but he does seem to have like um straight power he, he doesn't he doesn't use too much of the jab he does move up around a lot but he does more of the straight left um as a softball and a lot of uh hooks with his right to get the job done uh they might say you know hey he's undefeated uh sometimes that mentality really finds a way to win and he's been uh, winning some close fights. In, 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 I think Martin was one of his fights I ended up watching. Um, and he squeaked, squeaked it out. But I think Virgil Ortiz, if healthy, if he's returning back to close to even 80% of who he is with that smart aggression, the high guard, and with new trainer Manuel Robles, um, Hopefully this is a, a, a fight that he is really adjusting to the new training style. Uh, and let's see what Manon Robles really kind of focus on. There's a debate that, he, you know, Virgil Ortiz was getting hit too much in his last two recent fights. And if he could work on some of his defense movement, um, hip movement, so he doesn't get hit too much. The one wonderful thing about this fight is that it is, I guess, a soft spot where... If he plans to fight one of the big fishes right now in the division, either Bud Crawford or Errol Spence Jr. for a title, whoever, if they end up fighting at the end of the year for Undisputed, hopefully that will be the case. He will have to wait for the winner of that, or maybe they do a trilogy or uh, a rematch, or I don't know. There's the other uh, potential fight that I, I know a lot of people are uh, wanting is versus Boots Ennis. But Dennis has been looking really well. Uh, I think he's probably one of the most talented fighters, and he probably will give any of the 147 champions uh, a tough fight as he has speed, power, and boxing skills. Uh, but Virgil Ortiz is coming back to uh, on uh, Fort Worth, Texas, pretty close to his hometown. Um, and I know he's going to have a lot of support and he's kind of anxiously waiting to get back in the ring and wondering if that's going to affect him in any way. Like I said, the other individual, McKenzie, has 
had some early knockdowns in fights. So it's like you think, oh, they only two knockdowns. So there's a possibility of Virgil Ortiz getting knocked down. Uh, anything's possible in a sport of boxing, but I highly doubt it at, at this point because he has faced a, a lot bigger punchers um, and he has survived that. So uh, I am picking Virgil Ortiz to win and I'm excited to see what's next because after this fight, I really want to see against the next champion, um, even the winner of Earl Spence Jr. versus Crawford. I don't know if they're going to make the Boots end this uh, fight, but that will be an interesting fight yeah, you know, to make or in the future to make. Uh, you know, the welterweight division is one of the most important and impactful divisions in, in boxing history. A lot of the fighters uh, that have become all-time greats have fought in this division, uh, such as Roberto Duran, uh, Flo Mayweather Jr., Sugar Ray Leonard, Manny Pacquiao. Um, the list goes on and on and on to um, that I fought at 147. So it's whoever becomes uh, a champion here can potentially put in their names in the uh, history book with a lot of these big names. And if it, Virgil Ortiz is able to fight one of the winner, Crawford versus Spence, which I, I don't, I, I have to see how he looks next weekend even with that I, I feel like he might not be ready but like i said before i don't care if he's ready or not he doesn't care if he's ready or not he's ready to take the challenge uh the mental challenge right and he's not afraid to let that all go and that's a lot of appreciation because some of these fighters can prolong fights that at the prime uh, could have been different right and even if he virgil Ortiz is not in his prime right now He's, um, he's kind of close to it uh, unless Manuel Robles really changes and upsets game uh, that much more, which would be impressive. Um, I think at the times uh, where Virgil Ortiz needed a little bit more direction on the fight, and that's the reason that he wanted to change uh, trainers. And hopefully he's able to provide, uh, Manuel Robles able to provide some of that experience where he, he you know, he had uh, the ch a champion of, Andy Reese when he became Halo World Champion. So he does have that history. He knows how to train someone to be a champ become champion. And I can't wait to see what he does for Virgil Ortiz. Probably a more talented fighter than Andy Reese at this point in his career. Uh, but the health issue will be there. And I, hopefully he's fully recovered. Because he's uh, a bright star uh, coming into the this division. And... He said it himself that like he wants to become champion at 147 before moving up. So, But he does have that in mind already that he will be moving at one point at 154. So there's a lot of plenty of fights that he can have either 147 or 154. And uh, I wish him the best uh, or wish Mackenzie the best, whoever wins, right? At the end of the day, I think Virgil Ortiz will win and by, probably by stoppage. Um... I think he, the McKenzie hasn't uh, fought, McKenzie hasn't fought, fought anybody with that type of power, speed, and smart aggression that Virgil Ortiz has. Please like, comment, subscribe, and uh, I'll keep you guys posted with more fight news. <laughs>